Hello everyone, I'm Cole Altum, a managing editor here at Stratfor. With me today is Rebecca Keller for our monthly Compass preview. Now this month's edition focuses on agriculture biotechnologies, specifically GMOs. Now Becca, the idea of uh, GMO foods can be a little controversial, even unfashionable in some places, given the current popularity of organic foods. And as nice as it would be to have free range uh, everything, there are more than 7 billion people on the planet. Um, and current farming techniques might not be sustainable um, in the long term, especially in highly populated countries uh, such as China. Uh, can you talk a little bit about the future of farming in a place like China? Yeah, so China's geopolitical constraints are ho not wholly focused, but one of the main geopolitical constraints for China is their resource scarcity. The large number of people with comparatively small land and water resources, and that plays into their economic, political, and social policies. China is in the middle of an economic rebalancing right now, trying to shift from a low-end manufacturing export-oriented economy to one that is more driven by domestic consumption. And farming plays into that. They're working to modernize their farming sector, consolidate their farming sector, so it's more focused on larger operations versus the traditional small family farms. And GMO policy plays into that. Um, they're going to have to do more with less as the years move on because there's going to be competition for those limited land and water resources with industrial um, and uh, human consumption. So GMOs as a technology that produces higher yields on more marginal land will become crucial to the Chinese food self-sufficiency strategy moving forward. And what about the Chinese public? Are they okay? Are they on board with the GMO revolution? Not entirely. Um, food safety and security has taken several hits lately for the in the in the Chinese public, um, whether it be contamination of of food products or mislabeled GMO products, even. Um, but the Chinese government, Beijing, is is pushing forward. They've been pushing forward since September with a large GMO uh, pro GMO campaign and television ads, uh, newspaper ads. Um, and that kind of publicity to try to shift the public perception towards a technology that they know will be necessary moving forward. Well, it can be difficult to win the hearts and minds of, of uh, some populations. Um, speaking of which, there, there are also some skeptical corners um, in the European Union where we're seeing some GMO policies uh, uh, shifting a little bit, although a little bit more subtly. Can you talk about that? Yeah, so, so Europe is uh, traditionally considered a very anti-GMO bloc. They have significant environmental and health concerns, and the population tends to tends to move towards the anti-GMO uh, movement. And that also plays into the larger geopolitical picture for Europe, um, as we start to see the European bloc act more as nations and less as a European continent. We're starting to see the anti anti uh, the GMO opinion not reflect the continent, but rather reflect the the nation states and the, the policy shifts are, are moving towards that that larger trend as well. Um, two, two policies were one was enacted in April and one was proposed in April that would allow nation states to opt out of any decision on GMO approval um, that the European Commission uh, passes. So if the European Commission takes the recommendation of the European Food Safety Agency and passes the approval of either a, a, a crop for cultivation or um, GMO uh, foods or feed, a country can choose to opt out of cultivation right now. And if the proposal passes, they can choose to opt out of uh, GMO approvals uh, for food and feed as well. So it's looking at the nation states making the decision rather than the continent as a whole. Okay, Becca, we've got time for just one more question. Uh, give us a prediction. Uh, with a lot of changes, typically opportunity follows. Are there some opportunities for agricultural companies or traders who, uh, who, are, seeing, who are observing these shifts as well? So it's, it's, it's taking the bigger geopolitical trends and applying them to a small subsector, so the GMO market, as you mentioned. Um, in Europe, again, as we just talked about, you'll see closing of some markets, but perhaps the opening of, of countries like the UK. As far as China's concerned, we're going to see a lot of domestic development of GMO technology. So the potential for China to become a, a competitor um, for seed technology for, for de uh, GMO development and, and in that market is a serious uh, potential. There's a serious potential for that in the coming years. So we're looking at 
Europe potentially opening up or closing up, but becoming more of a fractured state, a uh, fractured market, and China becoming a competitor on the seed technology side. Well, that's all the time we have for today. Becca, thanks very much for joining us. And if you want to read more about this, our June uh, edition of Compass hits Monday. Thanks for joining.